So the next topic, can we predict the rebound of a deformity? And the answer is no. Therefore, I use a lot of intermittent guided growth starting at a young age with hardware removal, partial or the whole plate as needed, and continue to follow them. This was sent to me um, this week by a colleague in Africa, and guided growth is performed there, and follow-up is an issue there, as it can be in the US. So you have gross overcorrection with iatrogenic deformities. That's not to say the guided growth shouldn't have been done. He could have had osteotomies and had the same problems. But I came up with the idea in Tanzania, and now practice it in Salt Lake. Everybody has iPhones, even in Africa, so I have the parents take a photograph once a month with the knees facing forward in shorts and the date. And I tell them, when the legs look good to you, you need to come, in my case, to Salt Lake City and have hardware removed, have an x-ray, and so on, rather than coming every three months for an x-ray for my convenience. I call it the eco-friendly option. We have a lot of tools evolving and perhaps more accurate than the old days, but still there are deficiencies in our ability to predict growth, especially in these syndromes, as Dr. McKenzie mentioned. So these are useful if you're doing physeal ablation, permanent arrest, uh, you need to do the calculations. But if you're doing reversible technology for angle or length, you don't need to do the calculations. Is the perfect timing, is there perfect timing for guided growth? Um, no, there isn't perfect timing. If you wait too long, you will miss the opportunity to correct it. If you do it too soon, you just need to follow them and avoid the problems such as I showed you. So these methods, I'm not putting them down. They're, they're important to learn and useful to know, but not required for reversible tethering. Therefore, um, since guided growth is reversible, almost without exception, it can be repeated if rebound occurs. I either removed preferentially for me the metaphyseal screw, but if need be, if the plate is too close to the epiphysis, then I take out the entire construct. And this article submitted to JPO, and I'm one of the editors, but it concluded, I think inaccurately, that the majority of eight plate constructions are not suitable for the reinsertion of metaphyseal screws. Their concern is if you just take out the metaphyseal screw, you may have continued tethering and overcorrection and problems, and you could, but that's a minority of cases. I'll show you some. So my strategy for angular correction is intermittent guided growth, beginning at a young age, to restore the mechanical axis to neutral, remove the screw or the plate, and repeat as necessary, and follow to maturity. So this is a patient who is a competitive tennis player from California. For whatever reason, they came to Salt Lake City for intervention because he was having knee pain that was progressive and difficulty running. So he underwent guided growth, and he corrected uh, rather quickly in about four months. And uh, upon removing the screws, you can see the continued growth that's occurring. His mother was a, is a self-described compulsive photographer. She took about 200 pictures of us in the office during the initial interview. Um, <coughs> and she took pictures of her son every two weeks, and I'm indebted to her for documenting it so well with consistent clothing and background and outlining his footprints from the beginning to the current at that time, showing how rapidly it corrected in his case. But you can imagine how this affected not only his tennis game, but it helps his knee function. And uh, here he is right after surgery and four months later, normalized. I took out the single screw, as I mentioned. He started to drift back into valgus, so I reinserted it, and he corrected to neutral and has matured. Uh, multiple epiphyseal dysplasia is not a contraindication. As Dr. McKenzie mentioned, any condition may lend itself to trying this, although some don't work as well. You can see the epiphyseal irregularity in the distal femora, proximal tibia, and ankles which during my training were a contraindication to ever go near a sick physis, so we would do osteotomies. But as it turns out, as you realign things, these can remodel to a significant degree in spite of the underlying condition. For example, look at the uh, remodeling that's gone on in the condyles and the plateaus that have filled in uh, as a result of neutralizing the mechanical axis. 
The screw retrieval is simple and percutaneous and rapid under general anesthetic. You can see a prior screw here. So they'll con growth will continue in these patients. This is a patient with Schmidt metaphyseal dysplasia, which is relatively common in uh, Utah. And these children at presentation have a positive Trendelenburg gait and fatigue pain. They have pain because they effectively have a stress fracture. This is a common chondral epiphysis. The trochanter is taller than you think and will abut against the ilium, especially with varus, opening this like a book. You do not need a CT scan, 3D reconstruction, or MRI to figure this out. You simply take a view with the hips rotated inward to get an orthogonal view. And at the time of his arthrogram, here's the tip of his trochanter, much higher than you might expect on plain films. And this lends itself to tethering of the proximal femur to stabilize that, get rid of the trendvelinder brigade in the pain, regardless of the neck shaft angle. This patient, done in December of last year, returned in April and in between, and I had them scheduled to remove hardware, but they had some family issues and another three months passed, during which time she's overcorrected, and I was uncomfortable removing just a screw when the epiphyseal uh, screw is so close to the physis. So you have to use your judgment. If you see this effect here, which is like a metazole procedure, and they're overcorrected, you don't want to take out one screw and leave that plate. So I took out her hardware, and upon reviewing, this is the arthrogram the day of surgery when I put these in, and to critique it, I should have used a tall plate, even in a two-year-old, and had a more transverse, longer screw trajectory, and it might have prevented this from migrating upward, like a, an anchor dragging through the bone. So a taller plate, longer screws, and a lower start for her would have been a, a better idea. And uh, my strategy is having removed all the hardware. This shows a trick for removing. You, you move, <coughs> loosen both screws. The one you can see best, you take out all the way. You reach in with a hemostat to capture that hole. And then you take out the other screw and the plate simultaneously. So it's quite simple if you do it that way. And my strategy is to wait several months and see whether she needs further plates. At the hip, in the same patient, I exchanged the screw and uh, got a better grip, put in longer screws. The shorter screws don't grip as well, so I put in the longer screws for her. This is a patient with idiopathic genu valgum who corrected, as you see here, and was advised to have screws taken out, but a few, well, 14 months went by. Fortunately, his overcorrection was mild, but significant. So I removed the screw on the corrected side and I removed the plate that might be tethering and put it on the contralateral side of that physis. And in two months' time, he's already correcting his mechanical axis. So you can bail yourself out of these problems as long as you are attentive. This is another patient with multiple, um, actually, he had metaphyseal dysplasia. This is incorrect. Collagen 9 deficiency. At age 3, this is not physiologic. He was symptomatic. So I employed one third tubular plates because the eight plate didn't exist then. And at that time in my practice, I did valgus osteotomies to address the upper femora, which I no longer do. And uh, at age five, he was maintaining good correction of the previous varus. So they disappeared for nine years, came back at 14 with asymmetrical valgus and a question mark of what's, why is it asymmetrical and what's going on there. An MRI showed that he had a lateral tether, which I resected and placed a medial plate, placed a medial plate here. This one corrected. This one did not correct over a substantial time frame. So this kept it from getting worse, but the resection was not successful. So of course, you can resort to a corrective osteotomy. He still has open epiphyses, even though he's 18 years old. I recently put a plate here for the slight tibial valgus. So what about limb length inequality? I use intermittent guided growth um, for limb length inequality as well with a couple of differences. There's a two-year window of safety. If you restrain a given physis more than two years, it may not continue to grow. This is based on old literature that can never be repeated with IRBs. So I respect that as an arbitrary guideline. So when needed, I'll take out the metaphyseal screws, wait six months, and reinsert them. 
But again, take out the entire plate if you're not comfortable. A slight difference of technique, but the same hardware. If you put the screws in parallel for length, they tend to diverge for the first few months. So I put them in divergent so there's less lag time. I also tend to do this much younger than we used to calculate and do. I, I see it, nothing we do is definitive. I'm more humble than that. So I do intermittent reversible technology without calculations. And guided growth won't stunt their, their growth altogether. This one happily had good timing at age 13 and by college age he was six feet nine, 200, 340 pounds. So it does not interfere with the growth pattern. This is asymmetrical idiopathic valgus with a two centimeter discrepancy. You could argue you don't need to treat that. But with eight plates and the leg straight, I took that opportunity to remove the metaphyseal screws here and add a plate here and he ended up equal at maturity. And this is a similar case treated asymmetrically, sequentially. I had a screw loosened here at one point, so I put in a long 3-5 um, screw to get a better grip. So in conclusion, rebound deformity is unpredictable but readily managed. It's reversible and modular. It may commence as early as age two. Maintain vigilance, remove the metaphyseal screw or the plate, and it's suitable for angular and or length correction process.